Hey folks, welcome to part two of our two-part series on how to set up the Pine Research fully integrated spectroelectrochemical system. Still a mouthful. In part one, we went over how to set up the hardware, the cable configuration with the potentiostat, the spectrometer, the light source. If you haven't seen that video, link is in the description below. Additionally, I have a card that shows up in the upper right hand corner of the screen that you can click on to check out that video. In this video, we'll be going over the software, the drivers, actually setting up the spectro electrochemistry experiment uh, in our aftermath software and perform a spectro electrochemistry experiment of methyl biologin. So the following image shows the reaction of methyl biologin. It appears colorless in the two plus oxidation state, but after reducing it to the radical cation, it turns blue. And we will observe this transformation in the UV biz spectrum. Now in the next section, I'm gonna go over what software you actually need to download. But if you've already purchased the integrated spectroelectrochemical system, all of these files should be found on a flash stick that came with your system. So if you already have that, you can skip this section and then move on to the actual software section, all right? Now, if you don't have that flash stick, not a big deal. You'll be able to download Aftermath and the drivers from our website. So I'm on pineresearch.com. In the upper left-hand corner, if I go to software and click here, it takes us to the knowledge base and over here you'll see current aftermath release when you click on this you'll be able to download the installation file for aftermath now if you need uh, any of the other drivers such as for a wave now or wave driver or even the avantes spectrometer drivers just go to aftermath other downloads and then under other downloads you'll see instrument device drivers if you click here to expand It'll give you the option for wave driver, wave now, and AVA spec spectrometer driver. Just click this button in order to get the installation file and then follow the installation steps to install the drivers on your computer. So once you have the software and the drivers installed on your computer, I actually now have Aftermath opened up. This is Aftermath version 1.5.9888. Additionally, I have a WaveNow potentiostat and the Avanta spectrometer connected to the computer and everything is turned on. So the most important thing right now that you should be aware of is in the lower left-hand corner, you see the potentiostat, the Pine WaveNow, and you see the Avantes Avaspec spectrometer. Right now, those two instruments don't see each other. And in order to do spectroelectrochemistry, they actually need to talk to each other. They need to communicate. And as they are right now, they are not talking to each other. Cold. It's gazpacho. It's supposed to be cold. I wasn't talking about the soup. You, you need to listen to me. You need to select me. I did. No, you didn't. I used the integration cable. You need both hardware and software control. I'm only connected to you. You think because the MSR and the wave vortex don't show up in aftermath that I don't know? Well, here we go. Well, I, I hope you don't have that kind of dinner conversation, but your instruments certainly don't have to. And so if you go to the lower left-hand corner, it's very easy to correct this, you simply need to select the Avanta spectrometer and then drag and drop it into the potentiostat. And now you'll see that those two instruments are nested. The Avanta's spectrometer is nested into the WaveNow potentiostat. And those two are communicating with each other via software. Remember from part one, you will need to have the integration cable connected to the WaveNow potentiostat and the light source and the spectrometer. So as long as the integration cable is connected and the potentiostat and spectrometer are nested, you will be able to do spectroelectrochemistry experiments. I have the spectrometer fiber optically connected to the light source. So I have one fiber optic cable that goes directly from the light source into the spectrometer. And what you're seeing right now is the profile of the light source, the bulb. It has both a UV component as well as a visible component. I'm gonna move my hand over here to actually show you. You can switch between the UV and the visible 
by uh, switching here and you can see that the light source, the profile is actually changing. I now have the UV on and I'm gonna switch it again. And now you can see the visible spectrum. All right, so I'm going to switch it back so that I have both the visible and UV components. So if you go to the bottom of the screen, you'll see the spectrometer controls. You can adjust the acquisition parameters, such as the integration time, the boxcar width, as well as the number of samples to average. And then on the right hand side, you can see the lamp control. The lamp control allows you to turn the shutter of the lamp on and off. Now, if you want to use the lamp control, the lamp needs to be set to TTL. And I'm showing a small inset here. I'm gonna again reach over, instead of it being set to on or off, I'm putting it in the middle and it is set to TTL. So right now, if I go to close and I hit apply settings, the shutter is closed and there's no light um, coming through the light source. I can then hit open, hit apply settings. You'll hear a little click and now the light source is showing. Now, if you give me one second, I'm actually going to switch out the fiber optic cable from being connected directly from the light source to the spectrometer. I'm gonna go set up the honeycomb electrode. So give me a second. All right, well, that took uh, that didn't take too long, but uh, with the magic of editing, you don't have to wait for it. <laughs> so now that I have my honeycomb spectroelectrochemical cell with methylbiologen set up, I'm now going to save a reference spectrum. So I'm now gonna hit save new reference. And now I'm going to go and actually create a spectroelectrochemistry experiment. To do that, I'm going to go to experiments. I'm gonna to go to spectrometer methods. I'm gonna to go to spectroelectrochemistry. Click here. And the spectrometer uh, controls that I showed you before, the acquisition parameters and lamp control are all over here. I'm just gonna use the reference settings, but if you want to, you can change them. You can uncheck this and then change the reference settings or uncheck the lamp control and change the lamp control. So I'm gonna keep those the same. So next I'm gonna go over the wavelength limits. The wavelength limits are actually just what is displayed after you've collected the spectrum. The spectrometer will always collect the maximum range allowed, so 200 to 1100 nanometers. But if you only want certain spectra to be displayed within a specific range, say the visible, 400 to 700 nanometers, you can uncheck the instrument defaults and then manually type in what limits you want selected. Okay, so let's go over the sweep limits. So in a spectroelectrochemistry experiment, the way the, the parameters are designed are very similar to cyclic voltammetry. You can think of this as this is your initial potential where you're starting off, you have some final potential, you may have some number of segments that you sweep, but the actual applied uh, waveform is more like a staircase voltammogram, where you will step the potential, uh, hold it for a very specific period of time, which is the period. The amplitude is how high of a step that you're making. And the spectrometer will then collect a spectrum at the end of this period. Okay, so let's take a look at methylbiologen as an example. We're gonna do one segment for the sweep. The initial potential is negative 500 millivolts. The final potential is going to be negative 1,200 millivolts. I'm going to have an amplitude of 50 millivolts. I'm going to hold it for about four seconds. And that's it. All I need to do is this, and I'm going to hit the perform button, and we'll do a spectroelectrochemistry experiment of methylbiology. So I actually performed these methylbiologen experiments at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill in the Dempsey lab. So thank you, Jillian, uh, for allowing me to use your lab as well as your methylbiologen. What I'm showing you now is side-by-side -side footage of the spectroelectrochemistry experiment in Aftermath, as well as physically what's happening in the honeycomb electrode. So as we start to reduce methylbiologen from the dication, which is colorless, to the radical cation, which is blue, we physically see a blue purplish color form in the honeycomb electrode. And we start to see in the UV vis absorption, this absorbance in the UV and the red, which is giving it its blue color. 
Okay, so after our spectral electrochemistry experiment is complete, we can find the data in the experiment node. If we expand it and then click on absorbance, you will now see all of the absorption data. And on the right hand side, you'll see this legend that shows you the absorption spectrum with the corresponding voltage. If you want to look at the electrochemical data, you need to go to other plots and then click on electrochemical response. And this shows you the step potential that was applied and the corresponding current response. All right, folks, this concludes part two of our two part series on how to set up a Pine Research fully integrated spectroelectrochemical system. I hope you found this useful. Please leave a comment, a like. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact us at pineresearch.com and I'll see you soon.